So this morning as we gather, we have the call to worship, uh, creating a space to worship this morning. So I'm going to read the part where there's the L for leader, and then P, I guess, is participants. participants. It's the people. The people. Yeah, so I think it's been A and different other people. So you guys want to stand this morning, if you like? Can we this All right, so I'll read the L part, and then the bold part, we'll all, we'll all read together, okay? This is kind of challenging with a small group. Welcome today to a service of reformation. Change is our constant companion. What does God have in store for us? God seeks to form our lives anew as lives of love and service. We are ready to hear God's word and do God's will. Open your eyes, your ears, your hearts to God's awesome love. Come, O Lord, and transform our lives. Amen. Love can't 
anxiety and stress and depression and destruction and obsessions and those things try to take over our lives. God, you are the one. God, you are the one that breaks the chains, breaks the bonds. You shine the light in dark places. And when there are dark things and the light is shown, they flee. When there's fungus and grossness of sin and decay in our lives and the light shines, it destroys it. God, be that light and shine in our lives this morning. As has been said, God, lift the burdens from our lives as we prayed this morning. Break the chains, God, as we trust you this morning. As we experience your presence, God, in this place, we individually, corporately seek you, God, to welcome you.
have your way, Jesus. This morning as we gather, I just want to remind us, uh, remind everyone that we have our uh, little wooden plate in the back, which actually, for our tithe and offering plate, my mother-in-law, and she may be watching this, she might watch the video, so she can comment on it if she is watching it and can remind me where the plate came from. But it was from, a, I believe, a church yard sale or a garage sale. Anybody ever been to a church, like, sale of any sort? But I have experience from, like, in the very little that I've ever been to, like, a church sale, they usually charge very little. So, like, it's really nice. You can buy nice things and they hardly charge anything because it's a blessing, right? But I think she found that plate. I believe it was at a Baptist church in St. Joe, and I could be wrong, uh, but it's really nice and elaborate and all that. So she donated that to the church to have for our offering plate. We don't pass it around. Uh, we have it in the back. So if you want to leave an offering, a tithe there, uh, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, Brenda and I have talked recently about how we need to get our budget out. So everyone kind of knows what our budget is and kind of see where the needs are in the church. Because we do a lot with a small group church like this, a small gathering. Um, not super small, but smaller, smaller church than some other churches. We do quite a bit. We, we give to our community. We give to uh, many different people. We also kind of volunteer. We have the space downtown, which is awesome, which we just renewed for another year. So uh, there, it, it takes money. It takes resources. So when I said the list around earlier, that's kind of part of that, too. Kind of where, what is your area where you have resources as far as talents and abilities that you want to give? And then also financially, that's another way of giving. So it's not just one way to give. We definitely have we all have gifts and things we can give to help others. So um, we'll get that out. And we just want people to know kind of where the needs are and kind of where we are, where we're at as far as those. So it's in the back. Yeah, buddy. Don't use those scissors back there. Oh, good. Don't use those scissors on that curtain, please. <laughs> um, so, so careful back there, guys. Okay. <laughs> before we have, we're going to have a, just, I'm going to do a general prayer this morning for all the prayer requests that I mentioned this morning, and then uh, we'll also have those, uh, we'll pray over those tonight, and then we'll be diligent to get the prayer request out via email. See you, Steve. Um, be diligent to get those out this week as well via email. Let's pray and we'll have a special music this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, great King, Creator God, we come to you with all the concerns as well as with all the praises this morning that have been mentioned. We lift up every area of need where there's lack, God, we pray that you provide and that you'd receive all the glory, whether it's housing or a job or whatever it may be, resource, or whatever it might look like. We pray that you bring that provision, and Lord, that you would then be glorified through that provision that others might be provided for and might turn to you and give you praise for those things. We thank you in advance for that. As, as well as for healing, God, we pray for, for example, for Brent, who's suffering. God, we pray for his body to be healed in Jesus' name. We provision for housing, for medical needs, all those things. God, we pray, we do ask that you break the chains this morning off our lives, whatever the things may be that are holding us back from seeking you or being uh, all that you want us to be in this world. We pray that you break the chains, that we be willing to let them go as well. We recognize that it's not only the chains that hold us back, sometimes we're holding on to things that are keeping us back. Lord, we this morning gather and we throw off anything that would easily weigh us down or the sin that would easily entangle us, so we throw it off. We follow after you and run the race you've placed before. We pray for your strength in the midst of this transition time of the year as we come out of the camping season, out of the summer season, the next couple weeks. God, you know our needs. And Lord, we want to be a blessing in this community as individuals and as a church. So God, may you just guide us. Do you set the vision? May you empower us to do what you've called us to do, to be who you've called us to be, true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, being a blessing of Big Rapids. We bless all those that are able to gather with us online this morning, either now or at a different time. We pray for those that are unable to be here in general from our community. We pray a blessing over them. That you'd strengthen them, heal them, restore them, rejuvenate them, whatever it is they need this morning. And for all these things, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Be honored, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name.
prayer response this morning is a song called Build Us Back. I believe a band, a Newsboys, those who know the Newsboys, they covered this song, but I believe it was actually written, at least where I saw it first, was by a group called No Hope Collective. K-N-O-W, No Hope Collective. It's called Build Us Back. All right, kids. Kids, this morning we're gonna get to that song. They're, they're giving you a little preview of the song we're gonna sing. Some of these kids know what we're gonna do. Though. We got a kids song this morning. You're all gonna learn together if you haven't learned it before or heard it before. Right. We're gonna have a kids craft though. So kiddos, Heidi and all my kids. And he was a little little. He can watch. So let's move these off the table though. So you have some space. All right. All right, kids time. This morning. 
You're gonna make, actually I'm not gonna make it while we're here at the table, but I want you guys to sit here, because I'm gonna bring out some stuff. But I'm gonna ask, okay, so who knows what big thing is happening in the world right now? A big event that's taking place. It's a really big deal, it's on the news. Ardu, ardu. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Rio Olympics. Rio, you haven't even got the place right. Rio yeah. Olympics, yeah. Good job. It sounds like a tablet thing, it has an actual Your news, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tablets do that. So yeah. the Rio Olympics. So so what are what are the Olympics? What is that all about? Does anybody know what the Olympics are? What happens at the Olympics? Gymnastics. They do gymnastics at the Olympics. Yep. What else? What else happens? Swimming at the Olympics. We're talking about what happens at the Olympics. So what are the Olympics? But what is it all together? Right, all the countries, like most all the countries of the world, come together and they do sports and they compete against each other, right? They take the best athletes from all over the world, all of each country, they bring them in and then they compete in a whole bunch of things. And I heard the USA won the first gold medal. Do you know what oh. it was in? Anybody know? No. It was like shooting, like, like rifle? Really? Yeah, she was like a 19 year old girl and she like won by like a point against I think China or something, yeah. So, so that was like the very first, but there's a whole bunch of things. Basketball, I think they have baseball. What other sports do you think they have at the Olympics? What other sports do you think? Soccer. Soccer, yep, they have soccer at the Olympics, as far as I know. I'm not an expert, by the way, on the Olympics, so if I get this wrong. Heidi, do you know of any other sports, sports do you like? Basketball. Basketball happens at the Olympics. Heidi, do you remember what Volleyball. we watched yesterday? Volleyball. They, they were in the water. Ooh, watching water stuff. And there was a ball. Ooh, what is that? Water polo. Water polo. <laughs> you don't try to. You try not to drown your person. <laughs> joke. Sorry. It's just a joke. Beat me to it. <laughs> so you watched water polo yesterday? That always seems really challenging to me. I don't even think I'd even try that. Like it just, I don't even know what it is. Like you, throw so. the ball in the water. you have to like be treading water while you're throwing the ball to make the goal. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> like soccer in the water with your hands. <laughs> what other sport? Any other sports we can think of? Or other adults know other sports that happen at the Olympics that? That you guys like, maybe you like to watch. I don't know. I say no. <laughs> I don't say those aren't taken, but I know they do like run, running, like running, track yeah. or something like that. You saying Bolt's probably gonna like shot put the competition? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Shot put, the javelins, all yeah. the all the track and field stuff. Yeah. Long jump. I don't know. Yeah. I'm starting to make stuff. They up do now. a lot of stuff, and like they're they're like jokes, like different things. Like if you know, Michiganders win the Olympics, they should have cornhole because that's a game that should be. <laughs> You know, it's like the only game that you really, other than like bowling, where you actually kind of like drink like or euchre, euchre, would euchre would be another good Michigan. Yeah, discus would be throwing hubcaps. Well, I think they have volleyball. I think they have beach volleyball. Oh, yeah. They have beach volleyball, volleyball and they would believe they have court volleyball. It just depends on the <coughs> you know, which one it is. You see things. We're gonna get there a little bit. So I want to show you. So I think so. One thing happens at the beginning of the Olympics. Does anybody know what happens? How do they start the whole Olympics off? They take a, they take a torch. You know they have a torch. And they start, and I believe it's in Greece, right? Like the original place where the games happen. And they would take that torch, a big, huge torch, and they carry it, and different people carry it all around the world, wherever it takes, to take it to the place where the Olympics are going to happen. And then they take that torch. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is that no right torch? <laughs> yeah, so they take their torch. So you guys are going to make these this morning, okay? You might need a little help, or you guys can, older kids can help younger kids out. So they take a torch, and they, they run around, they run, and then they... They light this big torch at the Olympics, which stays lit, as far as I know, during the whole Olympics. So they have this big, huge torch, and they light it with that one torch that they carry all the way from, again, I think it's in Greece, I think, wherever the Olympics happened originally. I would assume that it's yeah. Greece. So again, I should have studied this before I came and talked about it. But, <laughs> you know, so anyway, it's so like they carry it, and they, they run it. People, different people, famous people and others, they run it from there across the country and across the world, and then they light it, and that's how the Olympics start. And that's the big torch lighting ceremony. So you guys this morning are going to make your own torch. I've got everything here. I've got all the colors. And this will be your, if you want to look at an example of, you know, that's a pretty good torch. <laughs> this is going to be your example of the torch. And then all the stuff's in here, and I'll go ahead and put it back in that different color paper. So you can make like your torch, you know, barrel, whatever, out of whatever color you want. Wow, all the different colors. Green. Green's in there. You got tape. You got glue sticks. So you can like, and you can kind of glue like inside uh, the top and then like stick the paper in there. You gotta kind of like really narrow. It's a, this is really long paper, so you gotta like stick it way down in there. So that paper is all the way down to like right there. So all that's gonna be your crafts this morning. Yeah, that's you can, 
Yeah, that, that's the one I made this morning. I, I'm not much of an arts and crafts person, but that can be your example. Yeah. Yep. So you're gonna have you're gonna make this out of your construction paper. Then, yep, that's the paper right here. That's what this is. You use a piece, you'll roll it up and take it to the table back then. If you guys want to do that, let's sing let's do a real quick message. So this morning, talking about the light. Again, I like the Olympic torch because that's like light, right? We've been talking about light. I want you to think, has there ever been a time where someone's done something nice to you, like a friend, or maybe your brother or sister, or your mom or dad did something nice? When, can you think of a good time where they did something really, really nice for you? That's gross. Get a tissue. Can you get a tissue? This friend has some tissue. Think of a time where maybe a friend has done something really nice to you. Okay, think about it. How, do, how does that, when someone does something nice for you, maybe they gave you a present, or they cleaned your part of your room. I know you're little kids, that happens a lot. Your siblings help you clean your room. Um, or maybe at camp, when you're at camp, somebody made something for you, or they sent you a letter. I know you girls have been getting letters from your friends at camp. Right? That's kind of nice. But can you, if you think of a time where someone's done something nice for you, how does that make you feel when someone does something nice for you? They go out of their way, and they give you something, or they... They say something nice about you to you. How does that make you feel? Happy. Happy? What else? Do you have to feel anything else? Nathaniel, how does it make you feel when someone does something nice for you? I'm really happy. happy? Okay, what else? Zoe, when does someone does something nice for you, like they help clean your room up for you and you don't have to do all the work? Or something like that. How do you feel? You feel good? Feel like you're thankful, like you're thankful that they did it. That was really nice of them. Mm -hmm. Many times when we, when someone does something nice for us, when they do something that it's really special, we're like, "Wow, that's really nice." They didn't have to do that. It makes it makes us feel good. It makes us feel happy. But also sometimes, doesn't it make you feel like you want to do something nice for somebody else? Like if someone gives you like a present, you're like, "I want to give somebody else a present." You know, someone gave me a present. Maybe I could do that for somebody else. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe someone helped you clean your room, and you're like, oh, I could do that for somebody else. It makes me feel good. Do you ever feel that way? Right? Or maybe if mommy and daddy do something nice, you're like, well, I can help them with something. Sometimes that happens. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus said, let your light, think of this as like a light. It's not a real light, is it? That's not hot, right? Is that hot? No, we're good. Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds. What are good deeds? What are good deeds? Doing good. Doing, good. doing something good, right? Yeah. Doing good stuff. So how you act, right? Doing something. Doing Jesus. Something to, other to other people. Yep. So let uh, let your light light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter five verse sixteen. So what do you think Jesus meant when he said that? When Jesus said, let your light shine, right? So think about a light. Did he mean like a real, like, did Jesus mean make a torch and then let everybody see it? Like Olympic torch, hold it up in the air so everyone can see it. Is that what he meant? Let your light shine? No, so what did he mean then? Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. What does that mean? Glorify your Father. What do you think it means? Yes, yeah, so be good, right? So do, do good things. Show them Jesus by how you, right? The kind of how you act, right? So Jesus uses the, the image of light. He's talking about light, like our Olympic torch here, right? So think about like our lives, like light shining out in the darkness. He said, "Let your light, let your deeds." He's kind of tying it together. Like so, whatever you do is kind of like a light, right? So like, when I do a lot of good deeds, it's a really bright light, right? When I'm doing it for Jesus, he says, "Do that so that other people can, so that other people see your good deeds, but not just so that you can do it, right? What does he say? So that what?" they would then glorify your Father who is in heaven. So I think what Jesus is trying to say is that when we do those good things, the goal is that we might help other people so they might get to know God too. So we might know God, we love God, we want to know more about who God is, and follow Jesus. Jesus said, then do what he's called us to do, shine our light bright like our Olympic torch, and light a big light, and then everyone else, when people see that, then they'll want to do those things too. Kind of like when someone does something nice for us, we want to help somebody else. Well, Jesus forgave us of our sins, and he loved us, and he, he continues to love us. So he says, go out and do these things so that others might see it too. And they might glorify God. 
Jesus taught us to use the light we have, our good deeds, loving others, our words, so that others will notice, so that they would love and follow God too. That's what Jesus teaches us. Part of it. So what I'm going I'm to challenge you this week. Here's your takeaway. I'm going to call it our takeaway. What do you take with you? Well, you're going to make a torch. That's something you're going to take with you today, okay? So make a torch. And I'm going to have that back in the back. Also, though, I'm going to challenge you to take a little memory card this morning. Everyone gets one. Heidi, here's one for you. And what does it say? What is it on your memory card, in your Bible memory card? What does it say on the front? Your verse, Matthew 5.16. So what I want you to do is, that's the same thing. Yeah, everyone has the same one. So I want you to take this, and throughout the week, have your mom or dad, if you can't read it very well yourself, have your mom or dad read it. So that's me or, or Heidi. It's your mom or dad. Read the card, and I want to challenge you, for your older kids especially, try to memorize this. Could you memorize, like learn that and remember it? That's right, yep, for the, for, yep, cadets group, yep. So I want you to use this, and we're going to do these throughout different weeks, but you're going to take a little Bible memory with you, and then I want you to try to memorize it by next week, but at least read it a couple times. And think about that light that Jesus said to shine your light, do good things, do what he's called us to do, love others, take care of other people. That's shining our light in the world, that they might then know God better too, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. All right, so we're going to finish with that. And then also this week, I want you to think about how you can shine your light. How can you help other people? How can maybe you do something good? Shine your light this week. What can you do simply? Maybe one thing. Help someone else. Help mom or dad. Help with your little brother. Right with Hewitt. Give him a kiss. Help out around the house. Help your friends. That's right. That's really nice. That's like shining your light, right? That's part of it. All right, guys. So I want to give you this craft stuff. You can go to the back. And I want you guys to try this out. Let's see how we can do it. If you want to look at mine and take it apart, you can do that and kind of figure it out. Here we go. Crafts. Are you all the kids going to help the little kids out a little bit? That'd be great. I'll show you out your own papers. Orange. What do you basically, how I did it is you can do it in whatever order you want. You take one of each color and then you put it together and you kind of like narrow it. You put it down into the paper. And you have to make one of those first. So roll it on the paper. Okay. You want to kind of glue around the inside of the, of the hole at the top, that'll help the paper to stay in there. Pretty simple. You have to kind of roll it up, maybe make it like the top end a little bit more like wide. See, like it's kind of like that. Yeah, how, yeah, how are you going to do it? Like along the paper and going through? Or make your choices. <laughs> if anybody else wants a Bible memory card, I'll leave these out for us too if you want to do Bible memory verses as well. I think it's a good practice, even for us adults, even probably more so. We can do that. It's just one verse. So I'll leave those out if anyone wants to grab one before we go today. Does anybody else have that where you, like, you kneel down and like just your feet fall asleep? Like if you kneel? I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I'm the only one who has that sometimes. But. I wake up in the night because my hand falls asleep. So, yeah. I mean, it happens. Sometimes, I guess. Um, we're gonna, we'll do the kids' song at the end, guys, because I know we've got to get into this message. But there's the kids' song we're going to do at the end. What we're actually going to do is with the blind man, we're going to do that. We'll get to that. Right. This morning, we're going to be continuing on the series that I've been going through on the light. Uh, and our theme is Community Transformation. The last couple weeks we've been going through um, different elements of transformation that come because of the light of Christ. So the first week that I, I kind of talked about is the light in general, carrying the light. So what does it mean to carry the light of Christ? And then I kind of delineated four areas that I feel the light, from scripture we see the light, how it transforms us. So a couple weeks ago I talked about personal transformation. Through the light of Christ we are changed. We, as, as it's been said in scripture, we go from darkness to life, to life, death to life. Scripture, Jesus talks about going from death to life. Paul talks about going, we were once darkness, now you are light in the Lord. Live, therefore, as children of light. I've talked about that. Um, so we, we are transformed as we follow Christ to become light. Jesus said himself, I am the light, but then he also said, you are the light. And so we're going to get to that here in a minute. But we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Then, 
I talked about relational transformation last week. As we live in the light of Christ, that transforms our relationships with each other, with other people. So instead of living this kind of anger, hatred, you know, or, or apathy towards one another, it changes us to being compassionate and caring. And that light should change us. Just like when we turn a flashlight on in a dark place, something changes immediately. If we, ha we are the light, darkness should be diminished or totally eradicated from the situation. Not, it shouldn't get darker. So if there's hatred or there's dissension in our relationships in or in our communities, which we'll talk about today, it shouldn't get darker when we show up. <laughs> it shouldn't get darker. It shouldn't, get, it shouldn't stay the same. It should become lighter. It should become better. And so that's just the way it should naturally be. As light turns on, darkness goes away. So my question this morning is, we're, as we're talking about this theme of community transformation, and the title of the message is, Our Light, Our light Changes People. I was thinking about, again, as I thought the last couple weeks about light. Thinking about this question, how does, how does light change things in our world? Just think about it. How does light, I mean, I just mean this is a very general question, it's very general. So how does light change things? No, we could say obviously, right, well, okay, I turn a light on in the room. This is a good, this is the simplest example. I turn a light on in the room, it's not dark anymore. What's that? Helps things grow. Right, exactly. That's a good one. Yeah, right. So, like, the sunlight, right, helps for things to grow. That does change things. That's a good one. How does light change things? A couple of things I thought of. These are, I thought these were kind of good. Maybe it's hard to think of this, but I like that one, too, especially. Um, if you're driving down the road and uh, you see a light, like a red light, <laughs> That affects things, doesn't it? Like it changes things. At least it should. And if you think about us, right? Red light means what? Stop. Hopefully. Green light means go. And yellow light means or make sure you can make it. <laughs> make sure you can answer, right? You got the right answer. He gave yeah. the normal answer, right? <laughs> I was thinking, we well, take it one of two ways. Either it's like slow down or gun it because you need to make it through. Uh, what about you're driving down the road? Again, mine are like mostly driving analogies. So think of light when you're driving at night, or even in the day. You're driving along, do do do, red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. How patriotic, red and blue. Wait a minute, what does that mean? <laughs> Pull over, probably they're getting pulled over, or like they're trying to go by you, right? So it makes something changes. They're supposed to change. So light is symbolic. Symbolic, yeah, it does have symbolic, right? Yep. Same thing with red flashing lights. You're driving down the road, that changes things. Um, this is a random one, but again, I'm just thinking from our own perspective. As we're looking at the world, we see light. It affects something. Something is, it, it relates to something. I don't know why I thought of Halloween. If you think back, if you were did that trick or treating growing up, and you were, I take my kids out, and I'm walking along, kind of getting dark, and I see a light. What does that mean? On a porch. What's that? <laughs> oh, great, yeah, dark. Yeah. If I see a light on a porch, that means free candy. <laughs> That means I need to go to that porch. If it's dark, it's not good. But I, I like what you're saying to you about like light growing things, light being symbolic. That's a good point. The way I was kind of tying it in was, while, while light in our world can cause us to do things voluntarily, when I see lights coming, you know, like flashing lights coming down the road, if I'm driving, I pull off to the side of the road, uh, the porch lights on. There's probably many other examples you can think of how light affects. Nice. Good job, Zoe. But light in our world, it affects us either voluntarily, out of habit, because of law, in those cases, with that kind of light. And I'm thinking about like light that we see and how it affects us and how we respond. We're going to get to it at the end, very end, we're going to sing that song instead of this little light. Very nice, buddy, look at your torch. The light of Christ in us actually changes, the light of Christ changes people. So when we see like a flashing light, we see things, we kind of react to that light because of what it kind of causes us to think of, or maybe out of this reaction. But the light of Christ in us changes us. Like I said about personal transformation a couple weeks ago, but it changes people in our world. But that change is not mere change for the sake of change. Sometimes in our world, sometimes in our world, whether it's in business, politics, whatever, we talk about just changing things, like, and that goes across the spectrum, no matter what it is. We want to change things. I'm going to come and I'm going to change something. I'm a new CEO. I'm going to change things. But sometimes change, it seems to come, sorry, come here. change sometimes comes, we, is presented as just change for the sake of change. 
But the chains of the light of Christ brings is a chain that brings wholeness into our lives and glory to God. That's the light of Christ in us. Maybe we can think back, and we're going to actually use the scripture from our kids' time this morning. It's kind of our main scripture. So let your light shine before others. They may see your good deeds. When we look at our own lives, I think we see that. When we see light from other people, when we see the light of Christ in other people, it changes things. It changes us. I was thinking as I was preparing for this morning about how different people in my life, they've shown the light of Christ and how it's actually affected me. Probably only Brenda is the only person who probably knows Don Leaf. Um, but I saw Don at camp, at Camp Brotherhood Heights, a couple weeks ago. And uh, I don't know if Don's on Facebook, but maybe you'll see this video and give him, give him big props. But Don Leaf was a guy, he's part of the Church of the Brethren. He's actually from Lansing, um, Church of the Brethren. And I knew Don from early on in my life in the Church of the Brethren. He was on the Ministry Commission, which basically is the group that um, walks with and approves or helps guide people who are seeking to become licensed or ordained in the Church of the Brethren. And I remember Don being there, and he was a very humble person, and he was a very caring person and a very wise person. And I, as I was there in my licensing interview and as I was walking through that, Don Leaf, I remember being a person who shone the light of Christ. He would ask questions, and he would prompt things, and he would, he would always share with such a loving and caring demeanor about kind of what he was what he was trying to challenge me on or get me to think about. And so when I think about when I saw Don Leaf a couple weeks ago at camp, at the younger kids camp, I got to see him and I haven't seen him in a long time and I said, it just made me happy, it made me smile. I'm like, Don, I just remember how much I didn't say it this way, but I was thinking you really shone the light of Christ to me because I didn't really know you and you knew that I was kind of being challenged by some things and you really care to to walk with me and to know uh, try to know me better than just kind of another person who showed up at this meeting and he had to kind of just check himself off a list. He didn't do that with me. I think about Brian Mackey. He was a, a campus pastor for me and a, and a good friend. He was actually the best man at my wedding. And Brian Mackey was a guy who I knew from my very freshman year of college and he uh, got me to go to small group when I didn't even know anything about the Bible. He kept asking me over and over and over again. He was very consistent, very persistent individual. Uh, but Brian was committed. He'd get up at 5.30 in the morning to pray uh, no matter what, and he was passionate for the Lord. He wanted to know Jesus, and he wanted other people to know Jesus. And he would challenge me in my own faith. Maybe some of us can think of people in our own lives that are like that. That they like just, they just somehow they have this, this motor going in them. They're just going, and they really help us. Brian Mackey was that for me. He shone the light of Christ to me to challenge me. Some of us know Nate Polson. Uh, Nate Polson is the pastor of Church and Drive. Nate was my pastor. Uh, he's in Saginaw now. He's also our district executive for the Church of the Brethren here in Michigan. And Nate pulls in as a leader. He's wise. He's a visionary. When he shines the light of Christ around me, when he would, he would speak to me, he'd spend time. I'd go to his office. We'd take a, I remember him and I taking walks sometimes around in Mount Pleasant when I was a student. And we'd just talk. We'd kind of get, get a pop and we'd talk about different things. And he'd put up with me in all my craziness, uh, all my different ideas and all my energy. And I'd talk a lot faster back then than I do now. And so he'd try to probably keep up with what I was trying to say. But Nate was a leader, and Nate would use his gifts, and he would shine his light through spending time, through planning things, through, through casting vision, through organizing things, and working with me. So Nate has shown his light in my life. Another guy, uh, Greg Travis, he's the, he's the worship leader over Mount Pleasant at a church. He's another person, through, for me, as I walked through my life, he was a worship leader at, at the church, and I played drums and played guitar with him. Some of us may even know Greg, Greg Travis, maybe you don't. He goes to a district, a district conference, he does a sound system. Greg is a very creative person. He uses his gifts, he shines his light through his creativity, he writes his own songs, he makes music videos now. He is meticulous. <laughs> He's one of these, if maybe you've known these people who are like, and again, if Greg's watching this on Facebook too, uh, Greg, you know that I love you, buddy. <laughs> but, He's meticulous. He's very, like, everything has to be a certain way. And for me, where I, I kind of like that, but not really a lot of times either, Greg helps to organize. He brings order where there's chaos. And he helps things to be streamlined. And I've, I've always I've appreciated that, but maybe I didn't always make it very clear. Greg would use his gift of creativity and music and technology. Uh, he does video stuff, so Steve and, and Greg get along pretty well. Um, he's consistent. So Greg, through his actions, through his life, I think back to people who have shown their light in my, in my life and around me to where it's affected me and changed me in some way. 
and I know it's changed other people. These are the people that I think of. Uh, one last one that I'll mention as a part of our the church community that I was a part of in Oklahoma. Many of you know that I was in Oklahoma for a number of years in school. Um, yeah, I probably can cry. <laughs> uh, Dan Rucker was the guy that was a peer, a mentor for me. And Dan Rucker was the uh, is, was a pastor. He was a spiritual development leader, and he's actually a lawyer now. <laughs> But Dan was this guy who was insightful, who I knew we had differences on some things, but he would, he would be okay with that, and he would, he would ask me questions, and he'd spend time with me, he was caring. And I truly, when we say we're brothers and sisters in the Lord, when we come together in church here, we truly can say that about one another. Those who follow Christ, we're brothers and sisters. Dan, for me, was a brother in Christ, but I feel like I really wish I could have been adopted as like his brother, because he's one of those kind of guys. And maybe we can think of people like that in our lives, that like... Yeah, I know I'm brothers and sisters with each other. We are the, the church. But there are certain people you're like, I really wish I could be like their actual sister or their brother. And if we haven't had someone like that, I hope that we can find those. But Dan, for me, was one of those people. He was supportive. He was caring. Uh, he was a teacher. And he was a visionary. And I really appreciate him. So maybe we can think of it our own. I just mentioned all those to say, there are people I know in my life that, for me, are examples of people who've shown the light in their life. They've done stuff. They've spent time. They've used their gifts. They've spent time with me. They've taught me things that have helped me to change. It's changed me. And I want you to think just for a second to yourself as we're going through this. Who are those people in your life that have really affected you that way? You could say, I know they've shown the light of Christ through their love, through their patience maybe. Sometimes people, people really need to show a lot of patience to me. <laughs> and to say to myself. They used their gifts. They didn't hold back. Think about that. Who are those people? You can say, yeah, I know they did that. They didn't have to, but they did. And it changed me. Jesus' light changed others. Think about the Bible. Jesus' light changed Paul. Truly. Paul actually saw, Paul saw the light of Christ. It changed him. We talked last week about Peter and Jesus, his reconciliation and relationship. Peter denied Jesus. And yet Jesus still poured out into Peter and still was calling him forth. And Peter's life went from a person who denied Christ and ran away to a person who ran to the cross. Tradition, I believe, says that Peter is actually hung on a cross. And again, I, I to be corrected by any church historians. But I believe it was Peter who was going to be hung on a cross for his faith by the Romans. And he said, I could not even be crucified the same way as my Lord. Hang me, crucify me upside down because I don't even want to be crucified the same way as my life. I'm, I'm not even worthy of that. The disciples were changed by the light of Christ, by Jesus' transforming power. Generations were transformed by Jesus. A whole world has been transformed by the light of Christ. If we think back to in history to others, people have given up their lives for Christ. Sharing the gospel, caring for the sick and the needy. We think of Mother Teresa, right? Mother Teresa gave everything. She, gives ev she gave everything for those that were in need. She didn't have to do that. And you think, maybe, maybe many of us haven't read books on Mother Teresa, but we know the name, probably. She, why? Because she, she's nobody really famous other than she's just helped people. She decided, I'm going to give my all for people. That's the light of Christ. John Klein was the Church of the Brethren minister during the Civil War. He was a missionary, a pastor. John Klein, born in 1797, and, I think it's 87. 1797, passed, died in 1864, right during the Civil War. He traveled, John Klein was a minister, and he was a minister on both sides of the lines during the Civil War, the North and the South. John Klein would go between Church of the Brethren members in the south, and then he would be able to travel across the battle lines to the north to minister, and he would go back and forth. Now, understanding the Church of the Brethren weren't a part of the war, like they were against, in a general sense, they were against the war. They wanted to bring reconciliation, and they wanted to see wholeness brought. John Klein spent over a hundred, he rode a horse, I think it was just a horse, I'm very correct if you remember his name is, um, but rode a horse, or walked, a hundred thousand miles in his ministry travel. 100,000 miles. 
how many miles are in your car? <laughs> and how long did it take to get that many miles? And how far do you have to go? 100,000 miles on a horse? That would hurt. That would be in pain. Right? John Klein was committed, to, even across volatile lines during the Civil War, and he was actually murdered by Confederate soldiers because they thought, what's up with this guy? probably a spy or probably doing something bad. He wasn't. He was just trying to be the light of Christ in his world. Ministering the gospel. Ministering to others. Sharing the gospel. Trying to transform the world. And John Klein, today for the Church of the Brethren, is probably one of the most well-known figures in history. Amongst others, one of the most well-known names. Because he didn't give up. What about world missions? Anybody know any famous missionaries? Many. We all know at least one, because we have a we have a holiday that is celebrated, I think, fairly inappropriately because of this missionary. But am I getting any good hints here? Columbus, not Columbus. That would be one that yeah, we definitely don't celebrate that right either. <laughs> that's a good point. I know that's a, uh, He's not a good. Yeah. Martin Luther King, maybe. Uh, well, that could be. Yeah, he definitely gave his life to the gospel. I'm thinking about one that's we have an actual holiday. That's a good one. That's a good point. Though. Anybody know when we all wear jerseys? St. Patrick, Patrick, right? He was a missionary. We all drink, and I mean, not we all necessarily, maybe you guys, whatever. But, you know, but that's, right, that's what we celebrate. He was a missionary, right? Served and gave his life for the gospel. And we have a holiday, and he transformed culture. He shone the light of Christ, changed his community. Just like Mother Teresa changed hers, John Klein changed his. William Carey. 1761 to 1834 was con called the father of modern Protestant missions, ministered in India. William Carey gave his life for the gospel. In a time where this whole like cross-country travel, like going to other countries, crazy, right? Not like you're not flying, you know, Delta Airlines, you know, you're getting a bag of peanuts and a pop on the plane. Like you're, you could die on the way, right? He went there and gave his life to know the culture, to live in that culture. Hudson Taylor, 1832 to 1905. Hudson Taylor formed the China Inland Mission, went to China, became a part of the Chinese people. A lot of people thought he was insane. That's crazy. Why would you ever do something like that? Went and transformed culture. And many others followed in his footsteps because he was bold enough to say, I will give my life for the gospel. Now there are generations upon generations now hearing the gospel because of the, what he began. Jim Elliot, has anyone ever seen the movie End of a Spear? You've heard of it? You guys seen that at all, End of a Spear? Jim Elliot, uh, 1927 to 1956, he was a missionary to Ecuador. It's a good movie if you ever get a chance. It used to be on Netflix. It probably is on Amazon Prime. You can find it. End of a Spear, and then Beyond the Gates of Splendor is the documentary, I think. It's actually the real documentary. But they made a movie called End of a Spear. In it, uh, it's basically a retelling of Jim Elliot's story. They went to Ecuador. They are trying to reach this tribe that lived in the jungles of Ecuador. They're trying to reach this tribe. They went in. They flew their plane in. They're trying to share the gospel, and they were murdered, him and four other missionaries, because the tribe wasn't too interested in having people come in, whoever it was, and they were murdered for their, see, trying to seek to share the gospel. The story goes that then the wives of those missionaries decided, they didn't say, this is horrible, God, why'd you do this? I mean, maybe they had questions, yet they went in, and they became the missionaries. They went in, after their husbands were killed, and other, they brought their children as well, shared the gospel, and that tribe came to Christ. That murdered their husbands, and then also the fathers, because the children got involved as well. Jim Elliot, flew a plane, wanted to share the gospel, died, but yet the tribe came to Christ. One of the journal reflections in the bulletin this morning uh, is one of the questions, and I want you to take the bulletin with you and think about this. How has Jesus' light in others affected or changed you? How has Jesus' light in others affected or has it changed you? I mentioned Greg Travis as one of my people that I think of, how he really has affected my life. He's a friend of mine, he's a worship leader. He wrote a song. He wrote a song in one of his bands that he was in. It was a, band, a song called Thankful. The name of the song was called Thankful. When he, Greg was in a band called Without Excuse. 
that when I hear that song, it still it gets to me emotionally because it has such a powerful message. This song that Greg Travis wrote in his band called Without Excuse, the song was called Thankful, and the chorus goes like this. You made yourself available when God led you to the door. A hand was reaching out, and you gave so much more. To the needy, the sick, the blind, the poor. Thank you for hearing the call. Oh, that is what I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for those that God led to the door of my life. When I was reaching out, whether I knew I was reaching out or not, they gave so much more. And I hope we can, again, think of those that have really, truly, through the light of Christ, So, as I said, the message this morning is about how our light changes people. We can look back at history and see how others' lights have changed the world, changed their communities. So the other journal reflection this morning, which you can take with you, is how have you seen your light, the light of Christ in you, affect others around you? Truly, think about that. How have you seen it? Like, has your light, has the light of Christ in you transformed other people? It should. It should be. We've already talked at length about how the light should change things. So in our, in our workplaces, is the light of Christ in you transforming others in that community? At school, in your classroom, at Ferris State, or wherever you are, is the light of Christ transforming that place? Here at the Lost in Town Church, in this community, is our light helping others to be transformed? How has it? We as a church, when we do our deeds, as we read in Matthew chapter 5, as we let our light shine before others and do these good deeds, are people truly glorifying our Father in heaven? I want to read this passage again as we close. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to read a little before what I read to the children this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Then Jesus goes on to say, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus begins the passage by talking about salt of the earth. What is that about, salt? If you look back at the history of salt, we know today salt is used for flavoring. It also is used to give you a heart attack. But that's a whole other issue. You know, people try to avoid salt, right? But salt is a, is a flavoring. So some of us might say, well, maybe Jesus is saying, be the salt. If we lose our saltiness, uh, you know, what, is it, what is he talking about? Maybe salt has to do with somehow flavoring our world. Well, salt was used for flavoring, but also salt was used for what back in, in those days? To uh, keep, preserve. Yeah, yeah, preservation. Exactly right. Good. Yeah, so it was a preservation uh, item. I'm trying to think of that. What's that? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, resource that helped to preserve meats and preserve other things, right? So helping to keep life, maybe, and as well as bringing light. But, so as Jesus is saying, we are, we are a, a I'm trying to think of the best word for it exactly, a proactive force. We are, we are salt. We are to make an impact in the world through that. But if we lose that part, if we lose that element, we just say, forget it, it doesn't matter. If we lose that saltiness, what good are we? Really, and that's a harsh thing to hear. But he's saying our purpose is to make a difference, right? Salt makes a difference. It preserves, it brings flavoring. We can just take it in a very general sense. But if we lose that saltiness, what is the point? There's no point of it. We just throw it out, right? The same thing with light. Light is meant to bring light. It's meant to bring light. And if we cover it up or if we try to hide it, then it has no purpose whatsoever. So Jesus then ties our light into our how we live our lives and said that should change things. And so when we think about our community, we think about Big Rapids, we think about Ferris State, 
there is much, and I, I brought it up originally as apathy. There's so much apathy in our world. When you think about community transformation. So if, if apathy is our problem in our community, we look at our neighborhoods, we look at our communities, there's such a division, and people just don't seem to care about one another. We don't have any real care to make a difference in our world, to reach beyond the bounds, to come to that door and reach a hand out, to open the door to walk through it, instead of think, reading the lyrics of the song. God brings us to a door, but we don't choose to open the door to walk through it, to reach through it, to make a difference, to go beyond it. We are apath apathetic. So then God, I was saying, God, so if we're apathetic, what's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite, I looked up in the, in the thesaurus, actually it's an antonym, right? So the opposite of apathy is what? What would you say the opposite of apathy is? Empathy. Empathy, right. Any other words that you'd use as an antonym to, to apathy? Love. Love. What else? Do you have anything else that would tie in? Compassion, Compassion yep. Concern, care, sensitivity, sympathy, warmth, interest, right? If I'm apathetic, I don't care, right? That's the exact op the opposite of caring and being interested. The light of Christ changes us, moves, moving us from apathy to passion. Passion to help and impact others. We go from not caring at all about our neighbor, not caring at all about that classmate that sits next, next to us, not caring or even trying to reach out to our family member who we just don't like too much. It moves us from apathy to a passion or a care or an interest to help and impact others and a passion to glorify God. Jesus said when we do our good deeds, which we're supposed to do, that's what we're made to do. It's not like an option. It's what you're supposed to do. Like salt, if we're salt but we're not salty, then it's worthless. If we're light without light, we're not anything. Jesus said we are moved from apathy, which is the opposite of saltiness, it's the opposite of light, to passion, to make a difference. Jesus said we will glorify, people will glorify God. Psalm 115, verse 1 says, Not unto us, not unto us, but to you be the glory. The light of Christ in us moves us from apathy or from the self-centeredness to a passion to make a difference in our communities, whatever those communities look like, and to bring glory to God. How we live, as we live like Christ, is the light we have to share. We live like Christ did, that is our light. That light is meant to be seen. So how we live is meant to make a difference. As it is seen, it changes others. It changes our us, it changes our friendships, it changes our relationships. We've talked about that, but it's supposed to change our communities. It's supposed to move us from being apathetic to not caring to seeing Big Rapids change, Ferris State change. It's supposed to be different, but not just change for the sake of change, but change so that our world might know God, might know Christ, that God might be glorified. All the glory goes to God. So this morning, I want to, again, as we have, give, and th give thanks to God for those that have shined Christ's life light in your life. Think about that. Who are those people? Give thanks to God for that. That's something we don't do. We do it at Thanksgiving time. We spend time thinking about things, being thankful. But let's be thankful right now. God, and maybe even reach out to those people who have really shown their light and let them know you really what you've done has made a difference. Like I've shared this morning, just a few names I could think of that really impacted me. So that's number one. Number two, this week, pray and then live out your light in the world. And truly really ask God to bring glory to himself through others as we're going out into the world. What is it? Where have we been apathetic? Where can we take the next step? Again, the song lyrics from the song Thankful. You made yourself available when God led you to the door. A hand was reaching out and you gave so much more to the needy, the sick, the blind, the poor. Thank you for hearing the call. That's what I'm thankful for. Wouldn't it, isn't it our life's desire that we might be those people? That we might be the ones that go? This is we can be, we are so thankful for those that have done it for us. We have an opportunity this week to be that person for someone else. Our community needs us, God. Our community, Big Rapids, needs us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Our community, Fair State, needs us. Our work environment, I know Brenda works out of state, but your community.
community needs even if it's over the phone or a teleconference, or whatever it might be, they need we need the light of this world. We don't need more apathy. We need the light. Heavenly Father, teach us what it means to be the light. Send us forth from here and so, and so that we may be the light of Christ, truly. And move from just the theory of it, yes, that's true, to I need to get a grasp on this and do it. And be it this week. God, may we see you glorified through others as we just do what you've made us to be in the first place and to do in the first place. In Jesus' name. Look at your, your siblings are supposed to hear your last song this morning. And Heidi. And Heidi, yes, all the I'm sorry. Yeah, Heidi's back, isn't she? Now we have all out here. We're going to do this song. I know uh, we have this little light of mine. is like the last song on the list, but I kind of skipped over the song Blind Man. So we're going to do that as our closing song. What's that? All right, the kids are coming. The children, yeah. the children are coming. The children are coming. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard this song before, but I remember singing this. Uh, where's my song sheet? I remember singing this in college. Actually, we did this as like a worship thing, a worship song. Oh, uh, there are some music sheets. I thought I had another one. Is there one right on the table? Yeah, that might have. Here you go. I've got this one. Too. All right. So, so yesterday, <laughs> I don't know if Camp Weather Heights does this song or not. I don't know if they do, but I know. You know, yeah. Well, we're going to sing the song. You guys all come out here. Come on and join the group. Okay, we're going to sing the song. So everyone come out here. All right, so we were, yesterday you guys were singing this in the car. And we're, we're only, making, we're only going to do more and more kids' songs. So all the adults are going to know kids' songs, too. These are actually really good songs to know. i got to remember how it goes. So. You guys clap. So, so yeah, we're going to have to do the clap parts, and I'm not, I might mess it up. So Micah and Ellie especially, because you know this part, and maybe the adults, they know the clapping parts. Well, nope. Okay. I'm right. So the kids are going to lead this. It's, so it's, I'll just do the first verse here, and you can kind of get the feel, all right? So it goes. The blind man stood by the road, and he cried. The blind man stood by the road, and he cried. The blind man stood by the road, and he cried. He cried. Show me the Is like that. that Same. Familiar. Yeah. <laughs> so. When we do, um, every time um, we sing Blind Man Stood by the Road, after that, we do two claps. Right, yeah. This that part, right? And yeah. then you're the woman, the woman stood by the well, and she cried. Right? All right. You gotta do the claps just on that first line. All right, here we go. Ready? <laughs>
not there. Oh, I don't know. That's what all the kids at our so that's um, how we end it. at um camp were like. Why didn't Jesus get more class? <laughs> Jesus awesome. I was like ready to like do the second and the third. And I was like, oh. We're all learning. So that's one of our songs, and we'll get back to this little light of mine again next week. We'll get it lights out. So again, I want you to encourage you, you got places on, the, on, on your bulletin to write notes, to do some of your journal reflections here. And then also, I really got to say, I appreciate Randall's, uh, Randall does a great job with putting these little pictures in the back, so I I'll make sure that I, too. what's that? I appreciate that. Too, it really, every time they've been really good. So I'm going to make sure I post the bulletin on uh, Facebook, for those that are watching on Facebook Live. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's commented on there or not, but yeah, we're definitely going to make sure we, uh, we post that <laughs> PDF next time so that people can see this. And have that. But please, uh, and also for the adults, if you want to get into some Bible memory, at this point, uh, memory verses, we have the cards. Matthew 5, 16, if you want to take one with you, keep it in your Bibles. Um, but those are going to be, especially for our kids throughout the coming weeks, we'll be incorporating some Bible memory verses. We can come back and share it the next week. So kids, memorize them for next week. Yes? I'll try. Can we make a video of Brian reading? We could, yeah. All right, let me just pray for us. Uh, hold on, there's one thing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face to all of you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. What? So what? I don't know how to do it. But two people joined.